Hey everybody, welcome to the Great Big Story YouTube channel. I'm Jillian. I'm Dave. Welcome to the show. Let's do it. It's time for an adrenaline rush. Let's head to England. This is not just motocross racing, this is sidecar motocross racing. Take a look. I remember the first time we got on a start line and it's just adrenaline, blood was pumping, heart rate was racing. Being on a sidecar does add that extra dimension because you've got to work with the person next to you. Having him as my brother in the sidecar is what it's all about. I'm Sam Houghton. I'm Andy Houghton. We're brothers and we're a competitive sidecar cross team. I started racing probably when I was about 10. Um, I'd been on a bike since four years old. Oh, there you go, that's a mean look, isn't it? I was th maybe 13 in that picture. Sam beat me once. In the last race that we had? No, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, only, still, only, last race. still only ever beating me once. Yeah. <laughs> Won my first championship with a local club, about 11 or 12 years old. Rode my bike all the way up through different championships till I was 24 in 2005, and that's when I had my accident. I had an accident while I was out training. I ended up going over the handlebars and, and landing flat on my back. Shattered my T7 vertebrae. That one moment kind of changed my life. I came out of hospital and I spent a couple of years without, without doing much. It's only so long that you can fend off that desire and that bug to get back on a bike. We found the sidecar and now I'm out racing this thing, which is fantastic. When I tell people that I race sidecar, they seem to assume that I'm going to be the one in the passenger side, but that's not the case. Um, I'm on the bike. The guys in the sidecar, there's no sitting. There's no sitting at all. They're throwing themselves from left to right, and you've got to be fully able-bodied. My role on the team is effectively to turn the bike in to keep it level. To do that, it's a case of chucking your weight from side to side. If Andrew wants to go one way and I'm not on the same wavelength, we're not going that way. Most of the time, he knows what I'm going to do. As brothers, you've probably got that, that relationship a little bit closer than you would otherwise. That feeling you get when you're out on the track, for me, it's, it's what I live for. You, you get it banked into a corner and you've got the bike drifting sideways. I'm out there and no one knows that I'm in a wheelchair. No one knows. You're just one of the guys, you're a sidecar racer, you're not a disabled guy. And it just, it's an amazing feeling. Jillian, have you ever wanted to run away and join the circus? Yes, I did. I was gonna go to circus school and I went to journalism school instead. Well, this young woman might have achieved your dream for you. Let's take a look. Three, two, one. There's a certain feeling of adrenaline once you get up there in the air. It's a feeling unlike any other. You feel power. You feel like you're in control. You feel special. That's what makes trapeze beautiful. That's what makes the circus beautiful. My name is Kristen Finley, and I'm a trapeze artist. 15 years ago, I was working for a brewery in Los Angeles. I had a great life, making great money. I had, you know, my Lexus, and I had a house. I was only, you know, 24 years old. A friend of mine told me that she was flying trapeze, and I said, what are you doing? I want to come watch. I ended up taking a class, and I was hooked. It was addictive right away and I quit my life in LA and I joined the circus. I went from good pay to zero pay. Just had to give everything up pretty much overnight. And here we are 15 years later, 
I never looked back, and I've been on the road ever since. To run away and join the circus, it takes commitment. You have to be ready for anything. You have to kind of live on your toes because you never know what's going to happen. Your own personal space, your RV or whatever, that's your home. And that's what has to be stable inside. Whenever you're flying trapeze, you have to focus on what you're doing. And the moment you doubt yourself in the middle of a trick, most likely you're going to mess up, you're not going to make it. The fact that I was able to do it made it more appealing to me. I'm doing these tricks and they're harder and they're harder and this is awesome. Whatever you want to do in your wildest dreams, do it. Anything is possible. There's not too many African-American female circus performers, but I was still able to do it. Your life is what you make of it and I wouldn't change my life for the world. I really wouldn't. For this next story, we're going to meet a Ghanaian tribal chief who's working to bring money back home to his community. And he's doing it by working as a landscaper in Canada. Just 45 minutes north of the U.S. border is a city called Langley. It's a typical city. There's a casino, tree-lined streets, and of course, a Ghanaian tribal chief. This is Eric Manu. He works in Langley as a gardener for this woman, Susan Watson. In Canada, yard work is a year-round occupation. You'd be surprised how busy we are during the winter. Back to Eric. Eric's story began with a phone call last July. Yeah, my uncle died and I got a call to take over that responsibility as a chief of my community, Adansi Abuabo number no. 2. He said something like, Really? Are you kidding me? And I said, I'm going to give it a try. So he went back to Ghana and became chief. But he decided to return to Langley. And this is when Susan got involved and where our contemporary story begins. Everything that happened after Eric became chief. I have seen so much in Canada as my own experience. And I also want my people to have some kind of opportunity in life. With Susan, Eric is working on raising funds and collecting donations to help set up medical clinics for his tribe to improve education. Overall, he's trying to make life better for his people back home. We started the To the Moon and Back Foundation to help the people in Ghana. We've collected more than two 20-foot containers full of donated items. My journey has been a very successful journey. Although I'm a chief in Ghana, I'm proud working as a gardener to support and give my people the exposure. I'm proud of my community, I'm proud of my family, and I'm proud to be an African, and I'm proud to be a Ghanaian. Now let's head underwater and discover the true meaning of freedom. Let's go scuba diving. One of the coolest things is when we take a diver with a disability in open water. The word freedom comes up over and over and over again because that's how they describe their feeling. My name is Jim Elliott, founder and president of Dive Heart. We help people with disabilities using zero gravity and scuba therapy. It's a great equalizer. We take their new normal, in some cases, and we help create a paradigm shift. So now the individual with the disability isn't defined by that disability. And they go into a room and, and people say, you do what, you scuba dive? That's impossible, you're in a wheelchair. Tilt it back a little bit. Okay, guys, come up, come up. I was on my bicycle and I was struck by a car and I hurt my T11 vertebrae and severed my spinal cord. I knew that all of a sudden when I lost the feeling and the ability to move my legs that life had changed. When I was 23 years old, I dove into a pool and I dislocated my C6, C7 vertebra, which led me to be paralyzed from my neck down. And I'm totally dependent from someone else all the time. I suffer from neurological pain and I take medication for that. 
But every time I get into the water, I feel better. I don't feel pain for a couple of days. So I love it. We see immediate pain relief. Individuals with everything from MS to spinal cord injuries and cerebral palsy can become pain-free. If we can get divers deep enough to 66 feet, which is three atmospheres, there's an extra output of serotonin in the human body. The serotonin will help with the pain management up to three weeks. It just helps our quality of life in so many different ways, you know, body, mind, and spirit. Diving is just amazing because I get out of this position and I can kind of do whatever I want and get in whatever position I want, which you don't get to do on land. When you're kind of stuck to a chair, being weightless is, is one of the best feelings. I was looking at myself standing up and that was for me fabulous. I loved it. I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm seeing myself standing up again. After I imagine so many years, 15 years that I got my accident. I feel like Total independent, I feel like freedom, liberty, out of the power chair. It's me again. Thanks for watching these great big stories with us. Click the horse to subscribe and do not forget to comment. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.